Great. Uh, thanks everyone for joining. Um, uh, as always, we record these meetings and I post them on YouTube for folks who couldn't be here. Um, if that's a concern for anyone, uh, please, please let me know now or after the meeting. Um, kind of have our standard agenda this week. Um, I think everyone here knows everyone, so we'll uh, move on to board farm status. Um, from uh, the purple end, we uh, Intel was uh, kind enough to send us a board. I the name uh, escapes me offhand, but it is one of their DSL uh, boards. Um, so that as we very much appreciate that, and that will be added to the board farm um, as soon as possible. Uh, uh, Mike, do you have anything from your end on Board Farm or anyone else? No, nothing for me to add. Uh, recently, I was kind of looking at HomeKit stuff, but then I, I was like, is it just software? But um, uh, I guess it is hardware that it's like an extra processor you have to have. I was sort of wondering how well that fits in with like open, open source stuff, you know, Apple's new home automation thing and whether that'd be testable but it kind of looks like it requires special a special chip that's in your hardware. No, but <laughs> otherwise, nothing to mention there. Okay, well, interesting. Is anyone else? In, in oh. HomeKit, it's just Bluetooth. I thought it was a Bluetooth low energy and a, and a combination of that and an IP. I was looking. It looks like there's like some encryption coprocessor that is required. Okay, it's funny because I thought that there were existing Bluetooth devices that have, through a software upgrade, become HomeKit capable. Um, oh, really? But I okay. haven't looked at it. I, I haven't looked at it in detail. It's conceivable. Um, hmm. Yeah, I don't know much, much either. <laughs> now I remember that I was going to get an Apple developer subscription so I could ac get access to the documents, and I keep forgetting to do that for the last two years. So I, I don't really know. Interesting. Yeah, I mean that's something we could we could certainly look at if there's demand for it. Um, that actually the the getting the board from uh, Intel actually brought um, brought an idea to my mind. Um, there potentially is like a, a use case for being able to test the DSL um, on on the board on boards, you know, because normally we test the WAN and the LAN, but in this case there is no WAN; it's just a DSL out. Um, does QCA do testing of that sort on on things, or uh, if they do, I'm not familiar with it. Right. I've I've only been here so long to work on uh, Ethernet stuff. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you'd you'd have to talk to probably David Har Hare of the Iconos acquisition team because mm -hmm. they have DSL platforms. Okay. Mm, I see. Yeah, I I'm wondering if there's a there's value in adding something like that to board farm i mean i would assume it's i would hope that it is not too big but i could be totally wrong i'm really not familiar enough with that um, i don't know about the trends in dsl whether that's growing or, or actually shrinking <laughs> I, I don't know either i i would say growing uh, there's uh, there's quite a lot of complexity there's uh, adsl there's vdsl and then uh, recently there's g.fast g.fast is a completely different thing uh, in ADSL and VDSL, you have the problem that you can be on an uh, ISDN line or a PSDN line, and you have the problem that you have uh, the European standards versus the uh, versus the uh, North American standards. So you end up with quite a lot of configuration capabilities, and all of those are different line cards in an uh, in an ISAM or a DSLAM terminating that on the on the remote side. Um, so this is a complicated. But you could get away with getting a fairly cheap and simple uh, DSLAM board just to do some functional tests to see if you can get a connection. But if you're looking at uh, at low-level verification uh, testing of uh, of the quality of the of the line, uh, the throughput that you get, then it becomes extremely expensive and difficult. Okay. Uh, but by all means, talk to talk to David here and uh, tell him I said hi. Okay, will do. No, I mean, I, I would, I would suspect that the that that more limited testing is probably at, in in the case of, of what we're trying to do with Board Farm for our setup is probably sufficient. Um, 
because we could just verify that you know there isn't an update to OpenWRT or lead that just totally like destroys the ability to connect at the very least for some reason. So um, I think that would probably be sufficient. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll talk to you and I'll talk to David here about that, um, and we can go from there just to investigate the possibility. All right. Um, I don't have a whole lot else about board farm. So, um, anyone else have anything? All right. Um, oh, actually I did the, just to remember, I just had a meeting, um, the, the hypervisor benchmarking group, uh, which is part of the security peg. Uh, they were kind of looking at the idea of doing, um, benchmarking for embedded hypervisors. Um, and they do want to investigate the possibility of where if board farm can be used for that in some way. Um, it might not be feasible. We're not really sure um, because we're not quite sure how what exactly the tests are going to be yet and things like that. But um, it is something that they want to look at. So that's kind of cool. Um, funding OpenWRT projects, uh, pretty much the same as last week. Uh, Luca, do you have any, any update on yours? Um, yeah, so basically, um, I think I shared this, uh, in the meeting two days ago, but, uh, just to keep everybody up to date, um, we have received under the NDA software from soft at home and, uh, we have started working on that. Um, we, because it's under NDA still. Uh, I guess Soft at Home team has uh, some things that uh, they need to clean up before publishing. But in any case, uh, this is the version that we can start working with. Um, we ran into some technical question and I think half an hour ago or something like that, I sent email to, to Soft at Home. Uh, once Soft at Home uh, says uh, okay this is the open source version we want to go forward with then i would uh, prefer to go into discussing uh, all the questions we have on basecamp if that's okay with everybody okay all right. yep. and uh, felix gave him the feedback regarding the uci so we are working on that in parallel as well um, yeah, basically that's it. So um, that initial UCI task turned out to be not so simple, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if not tomorrow, then next week I will have some concrete progress to report. Okay. Uh, okay, sorry, Pasquale here. Uh, mm -hmm. I, have, sorry, I have just a, a quick question concerning the TR069 from Softeto, because as you know, we as ADB, you know, provided the, 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 the source code to the, for, for now, to the base camp. So I'm just, you know, wondering uh, when we can get access to the soft at home source code as well, at least as a base camp. I'm not saying the, the overall open source community, but at least at the base camp. So among us. So the uh, more take, do you want to take that or? Yeah. Or yeah, I can, I can answer that. So uh, basically, it's just about our internal priority schedule, okay? Uh, as, uh, as we must have a, um, a look at, at it to see whether there are some parts of, I don't know which, uh, whoever it was, um, if there are no uh, IPR uh, problems, uh, we we should do this kind of uh, review of the code before we submit it uh, in open in open source. So I I would say that it should be something like one week or a few days. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, it's mostly cleaning up. Uh, indeed, saying uh, going. Uh, all the thing is like uh, what it said to see if there's nothing stupid in it uh, that we shouldn't uh, release. Uh, probably making sure that uh, the correct copyright and license headers on, on every source file just uh, just for good measure and 
um, and we still need to decide uh, which license we're going to use to publish it, I guess. Uh, but we know the components and we've released them, there, there's no problem, there shouldn't be a problem with IPR. Just potentially if some developer puts some stupid comment in uh, in the component itself and saying that this fixes this problem for this customer, it doesn't need to be cleaned out, that doesn't belong in there. It shouldn't be a big problem. Thanks a lot for the feedback. Yeah, so regarding the copyright, yeah, we noticed that uh, you don't have it in all files, right? And uh, I also noticed this in one one file. I don't remember which one uh, from ADB stack uh, when I received access. So just as a heads up uh, for ADB side as well to update that. Okay, Luca, thanks. We will have a look at it. If you want to directly comment that on GitLab, uh, it will be appreciated. Um, okay, I can. Uh, take a look and then post it. Okay, thanks. All right, that's good. I mean, uh, one one thing to to you know remind everyone is is that that when when we put it on uh, when we're talking about making it accessible via Basecamp, or it doesn't necessarily need to be quite ready to be open sourced yet. Um, we we appreciate that that we're not all um, it. it the goal is to to get it to the to everybody involved here, so we can we can move the process forward. So um, if it's you know you don't have all the licenses put on there, it's just an understanding. We're not going to uh, to um, release this public uh, anytime um, until the you know the licenses are ready and everything like that. So um, just uh, just to reiterate that 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 is um, kind of what we agreed upon in Paris. Um, I uh, the other updates on other projects. Uh, the um, internet access scheduling project should be ending today. Um, they have submitted the project to Lucy a few times, but it was not accepted. Um, so, but their code is available. I have a link to it, and I. I don't have it. It's in an email of mine. I can I can make that available to everyone. Um, they have committed to continuing to submit it to Lucy regardless of the end of the project. So that is is very positive and uh, getting it into a state where it will be accepted into into Lucy, the Lucy repository. Um, no news on the uh, the Wi-Fi scheduling one. That was, um, but that's not surprising. That's um, they had asked for a fairly significant period of time. It's, I don't think their their deadline is until November, so um, I'm not really surprised. I haven't heard anything on that. Um, we uh, regarding uh, the embed and Felixes, uh, I uh, uh, Peter, who is the CEO of Embed, had sent me some comments on the on the um, the contract that we had sent to them, um, and we addressed those and. We are in agreement on what um, what should be in the contract, um, and I sent that to him last night, so it should be signed uh, extremely soon. Um, so we there there is no uh, is no blockers at this point. Everything's been agreed upon. Um, no other discussion about that. I don't think. Is there anything else that people wanted to talk about funding open WRT projects? Um, I'm just curious, so I missed a couple of uh, meetings before. Mm -hmm. um, so it says four projects. Uh, so the one that we are doing is one, the one that Felix is doing is the second one, and these other two. Yep. Those are the four. Uh huh. Okay. Oh, oh, what are the two? Did you say? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. One of them was we had approved um, internet uh, a um, Lucy interface for internet access scheduling, um, so you could have the the internet access uh, turn on or off based upon a schedule. Um, it was a fairly small project uh, that we had approved. Another one that was submitted that that we approved was a um, scheduling the Wi uh, turning on Wi-Fi based on a schedule. 
uh, similar concept. Um, and that one was approved and that one has a deadline in November um, to be finished. So um, those are those are both pretty small projects, but they were submitted and were approved by the by the committee. So, okay. Yep. Thank you. All right. And, and we do want to we do want to um, start the uh, funding cycle again. Um, I'm hopefully going to have time to work on that uh, this week or the end of this week and early next. Um, it, it's there's been a lot of a lot of scheduling uh, work for, or a lot of work I've had to do for the summit in particular. So uh, that is has slowed that down. Um, but that's kind of the uh, kind of the plan on that. All right. Um, so at, yeah, as a reminder, if you haven't sent your your projects that you think would be valuable, um, please do send them um, to the uh, to the list, and so we can give those as suggested projects. All right. Um, no regulatory update this week. Um, the the uh, big thing that's obviously going on is open WRT summit. We, uh, I should say that not just accept the session proposers notified, the sessions were uh, announced this week um, uh, on both uh, purple blog, um, this mailing list, other mailing list, and on the open WRT summit.org website. So um, I would encourage folks who are going to be coming to the summit um, to, uh, to register as soon as possible. Um, we are probably getting a little closer than we would like to the maximum. Uh, so we are, I would encourage people to do that as soon as possible. If we have to uh, cancel it or, you know, cut off registrations at some point. Um, so we may have to, I don't, I'm not sure yet. So. Wojtek, were you gonna say something? Um. Sorry, I, I had a, I received another call. Oh, so I okay. Didn't hear the, the, the question. Oh no, I was just wondering if you were going to say something. I, I thought I had heard you heard you speak. So. No, no, that's fine. No, oh, okay. All right. Um. So yeah, that's that's the gist with with the Open WRT Summit. Uh, everything uh -huh. seems to be moving forward very well. Uh, Matteo speaking. I have a couple of questions on this uh, topic. Yep. The first one is just a curiosity, so I registered to the summit, I will be there. Mm -hmm. I saw that there are quite a lot of talks in, on schedule, so I was mm -hmm. just wondering if, they, if there will be some parallel session somewhere in the afternoon, maybe, or if there would be all at once in just one, uh, in just one session. Uh, they're going to be just one session um, for this year. I think it's going to have to be different next year. Um, but we but we did uh, we are doing them um, all in all in one. We we worked out the schedule and it works out that we we do have enough room if every session is 25 minutes. Um, and the committee had uh, decided that that is how they wanted to move forward. So, um, okay. yep. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yep. The second one was about the face-to-face -face meeting for the career interest group. So yes. I read that the a doodle has been created for that, and it, it would make sense a lot, so I agree with, uh, I don't remember if it was Hawk or uh, someone else, that proposed to do that at the same time in the same place. So since we will be all there probably in Berlin for the Open WRT Summit, if mm -hmm. we could group up that with the career interest group meeting. I I mean, I, th I think that would be a, that would be a perfectly fine idea if, if that's what interests people. But yeah, um, I think that makes sense. Uh, I, I know there's a little delay on getting some of the scheduling from uh, from uh, Qualcomm and from uh, or from Chandana and from uh, from Eddie. Um, so I will have to see what if their schedules work for that. But yeah, I, th I think that would be wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay. Yep. Um, and also, if, if you are interested in the in the carrier interest group face-to-face -face meeting, uh, please do fill out that uh, the doodle. 
um, if, if you want to be there. So we have a sense on, on schedule. Um, it based upon the group, the groups of people we're going to have, I don't, um, I, I think that, that as uh, you know, and Mateo, not just for scheduling, it's a little easier. I think that's more or less in the middle for most people. Um, because, uh, from what I've seen, uh, there's only, I think Chandana and whoever it is from purple would be the only, uh, ones from America. So I think that would probably actually be easier for most people. All right. Um, are there any other topics that we'd like to discuss? Um, I have a little question on the practical question on the, the OpenWRT summit. Um, I did see a specific time, the starting and an ending time, um, and I'm trying to see at what time I, my flight should be. Okay. So do you know at what point in time we're planning to, to stop and what planning time we're planning to start? Yes, uh, we are going to start. Uh, the first session will be at nine o'clock. There will be a, like a 15 minutes before we're going to have like a just a welcome. But the first session will start at nine o'clock um, and we get done. Um, it's a little after six. I think it's six oh five. It actually works out, too. Um, so but we are going to have a uh, have a um, dinner, um, a buffet style dinner and uh drinks so that everyone's welcome to join so uh but if you're not interested in that for example then then it would be about six o'clock would be the last one okay thanks that might decide that might determine if i'm going to stay another night and leave in the morning or uh... mm -hmm. all right okay. makes sense All right. Anything else that anyone want to talk about? All right. Well, then we will uh, we will uh, cut the meeting short then. And uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. We'll uh, meet again next week. Um, and uh, please, please be involved on the mailing list and base camp and, and all those good things. So, all right. Thank bye. You. Thanks, everyone. Bye -bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.